Antonio starts right now. The search is still on for a shooting suspect who opened fire in a San Antonio church parking lot. Why police say police, why police say the shooting did not appear to be random. San Antonio Spurs now on a three-game losing streak. Find out how the players hope to change that going into tonight's game at home against the Denver Nuggets. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we are starting a nice and humid at 75 degrees. And you know, things over the weekend kind of warmed up a little bit. And a good morning to you. It is Monday, November 7th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. And I'm interested to see what we're going to find out this week because it is November. It doesn't feel like it this morning. That's true. Saturday was a stunner. Sunday yep. was kind of weird. The humidity came mm -hmm. back. And this morning we've had some showers in the area, Mike Ozdrahe. You said you had a pretty decent one. Oh, yeah. We've got full-on windshield wipers going for about four or five minutes. There are a couple little spells, spells cells that uh, have a decent downpour. That's kind of the exception rather than the, the rule. And, boy, it is just... You if we were talking about muggy out there. Looks like the road is damp over there at 410 and I-10. You can see those little clouds hanging on in. And there's the smattering of some of the uh, the showers hanging around the area right now. Most of them are just on the light side, but there's a couple of cells. That appears to be the one maybe that Mark drove through that's uh, working its way up to the north. But a couple of those cells have a few decent downpours associated with them. Everything is sliding primarily up to the north. Another one is moving in there right around 90 and 35 that will continue to work its way up to the sort of uh, north northwest and that's going to be heading up in toward the uh, medical center as time rolls on and then that one up there around Balverde continues to go straight up 281 a couple of them just to the west of Canyon Lake and a few more of those scattered showers just crossing over 90 right around Hondo maybe in and around Medina Lake out there toward Lake E Concan again just few and far between here and there and that's going to be the situation throughout the rest of the morning there's also some some fog to deal with. Two and a half mile visibility at Stinson. Port SA is at eight, six New Braunfels, and then a lot of thick fog around Victoria. Rock Springs, Uvalde also has some fog around this morning. Temperatures are 20 degrees above normal or even more than that in some cases. And we're not going to move all that much throughout the rest of today just because we have such a warm start. And look at these numbers. We haven't seen dew points at 74. That's fog up your glasses. That's the humidity as somebody I just read this morning you wear when you walk outside and uh, yeah, it's going to be sticking around. Nothing really changes throughout the next couple of days. Mold is on the moderate side this morning. Light jackets, umbrellas, not a bad idea. 73, so temperatures stay steady. Some patchy fog, a couple of showers, a shower or two, a sprinkle later on this afternoon, 85 for a high temperature. Big changes coming in here, though, by the end of the week. Wait, do you see this? This front that's moving through and temperatures in behind it. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. New this morning, a man sitting on his porch on San Antonio's east side when he was shot in the leg overnight. San Antonio police say it happened just after 10 p.m. in the 800 block of Iowa near South Pine. Police say the man was sitting on his porch when someone in a vehicle drove by and started shooting. The man was hit and taken to a hospital. So far, there's no official word on his condition or any suspect information. So far, San Antonio police are still looking for a suspect who started shooting at a morning church service that ended with a man being shot and killed in the parking lot. That shooting happened just after 1030 a.m. yesterday outside the church on South WW White Road near Rigsby Avenue. When police got to the scene, the man was pronounced dead by EMS. Now, police believe the man was just leaving his car when a suspect who was standing in the parking lot began firing at him with a rifle. The victim's passengers were able to run inside the church. The suspect took off. Police also say four vehicles in the parking lot were hit by bullets. Police say the shooting did not appear random and the church was not targeted. An Amber Alert continues here in San Antonio. It's for the abduction of 13-year-old Joanna Luna. She was last seen in the 11,000 block of Springdale Drive back on August 20th. Officials believe the suspect involved a 17-year-old Richard Rodriguez, who also goes by under the name Xavier. The Department of Public Safety issued the alert after someone sent in a tip they saw Luna in a U-Haul. DPS says the pair was seen in a U-Haul truck with Arizona plates that read AE4438. Anyone who sees them is asked to call the SAPD Missing Persons Unit at 210-207-7660.
Today is the final full day of campaigning in which leaders of both parties will make urgent appeals to their supporters for tomorrow's midterm election. This election year has been against the backdrop of economic problems, the elimination of federal abortion ruling, and broad concerns about the future of democracy. With control of Congress remaining up for grabs, President Biden continues his campaign strategy of sticking largely to Democratic strongholds. Meanwhile, former President Trump, after campaigning in Florida this weekend, will hold his final rally of the campaign in Ohio as he readies another run for the White House. Millions of Americans have already cast their ballots, with early voting now on target to surpass the numbers from the 2018 midterms. There are new details this morning about the death of former pop star Aaron Carter. As ABC's Derek Dennis reports, his brother Nick paid tribute to him at a concert last night. An emotional tribute last night at this Backstreet Boys concert in London for the younger brother of singer Nick Carter, seen on stage holding back tears and receiving hugs. Now we've got a little bit of heavy hearts because we lost one of our family members yesterday. Nick Carter posting on Instagram Sunday, my heart is broken. Even though my brother and I have had a complicated relationship, my love for him has never faded. He added, addiction and mental illness is the real villain here. 34-year-old Aaron Carter was found dead in his Los Angeles area home Saturday. He rose to stardom in the late 90s after getting a start at just nine years old, opening for his brother's group. Not long after, Aaron's second studio album went triple platinum. That led to several acting roles, including on Sabrina, the Teenage Witch, and Lizzie McGuire. But in recent years, there were legal and substance abuse issues and mental health struggles. The Sheriff's Department revealed how Carter was found Saturday in a bathtub. Information in the call stated the house sitter had found a male in the upstairs bathroom bathtub unresponsive. The house sailor was instructed to start CPR on the mail. Neighbor Anthony Cheval says he tried to help. The house sitter or maid came to the door and uh, she just was screaming like he's dead, he's dead. And we're like, well, who? Let us help, let us help. You know, I told him my wife's an RN and um, she still wouldn't let us in. Slammed the door, locked it. Aaron was engaged to his girlfriend and they had an 11 month old son. I had a talk with him before about this and he's like, okay, I will go to rehab if that's what you want me to do. The medical examiner will now determine Aaron Carter's exact cause of death. Derek Dennis, ABC News, New York. The city of Houston celebrating the 2022 World Series champions. The Houston Astros today with a big celebration parade. It's happening at noon in downtown Houston. The parade expected to be about three miles long. Houston's mayor says he's expecting millions of people to attend the parade with school districts such as Houston ISD and others canceling classes. Boy, that's a great way to start the week, isn't it? Yeah, it's perfect for Monday. Congratulations yes. again to the Astros. Great series, 437, 75 degrees. And can the San Antonio Spurs in their losing streak tonight when the team hosts the Denver Nuggets? Find out what Keldon Johnson is saying about getting his team back on track. Traffic authority right now. See how things are looking out there on this early, early Monday morning with the time change and all. There's a few cars on the road, but we're not seeing any troubles here. I'll double check with TxDOT during the commercial break. And some spotty showers overnight here and there. Right now, just humid. And this live cam shot, 75 degrees for now. We'll be right back. Our San Antonio Spurs entered last week with one of the best records in the NBA at 5-2. and two. Since last Sunday's victory against the Timberwolves, San Antonio has lost three straight. That drops them back down to ninth in the Western Conference standings. Saturday night's loss to the Nuggets was not pretty. Spurs fell behind 40-27 after one quarter and never really made it competitive over the final 36 minutes of regulation. Keldon Johnson led the team with 25 points, while Devin Vassell posted 20 off the bench. After the game, Johnson was asked if young teams like this year's Spurs can bounce back. We do. Yeah. That's the, that, that's that's what we do. You know, that's that's our that's our character. That's what we preach every day. So you know, we were this strong. We 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 we'll be back on Monday, ready to go, uh, coming out the gate strong. We're a young team. Um, there's a lot of guys, uh, teams out there that are more talented than us and more experienced than us. So um, really can't take any nights off like that where we let our heads down and just uh, yeah give in. The Denver Nuggets are in town tonight. Tip-off set for 8.30 at the AT&T Center. The Memphis Grizzlies come through the Alamo City Wednesday. And the Bucks of Milwaukee are here on Friday.
To soccer now, San Antonio FC before a sellout crowd. Toyota Field last night taking the next step in the title match after a scrappy start to this one. Defender Connor Maloney was starting for the injured PC who suffered three broken ribs in their last playoff game. Finds the back of the net in the 23rd minute. And that's his first USL goal. San Antonio will lead 1-0 at the half. Let's take you to the 85th minute, probably the best shot Colorado Springs had all night to equalize this match. But Jordan Farr is there to punch the ball out of harm's way. Now in stoppage time, 101st minute, Santiago Patino puts this one away on the fast break with a goal right between the goalkeeper's legs. Right there, San Antonio moving on to their first USL championship game and win the Western Conference with a 2-0 victory over the Colorado Springs Switchbacks FC. San Antonio will next face Eastern Conference champs Louisville City FC. Louisville City has been to the championship game four times, the most in league history. Last time they played in the championship game was 2019. Louisville City has won the championship twice in franchise history. The last one was back in 2018. So this will be the first time these two clubs face each other ever, and it will be for the league championship. That game is set for Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Toyota Field here in San Antonio. It will also air live on ESPN2. Pretty cool. USA Women's Soccer captured the Conference USA Championship yesterday, beating Florida Atlantic 3-2 in overtime. Marley Frey scored two goals, including a header off a corner in overtime for the winning goal. UTSA claims an automatic berth in the NCAA tournament. They'll find out their first opponent and bracket this afternoon at 3 p.m. UTSA won at UAB for the first time dramatic fashion Saturday. UTSA found a way to win a double OT on a touchdown pass to Joshua Cephas. That marks UTSA's third OT game this season. It's their fourth win decided by a single possession. Roadrunners will host Louisiana Tech on Saturday at 2.30 p.m. in the Alamo Dome. Second time this season, Incarnate Word put 70 points on the board. This time, Cardinals torched Houston Christian 73-20 to this weekend. Quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. threw seven touchdown passes all in the first half. He's now accounted for 51 total touchdowns this season, the most in program history. UIW is off next week, but will conclude the regular season on the road at Northwestern State University as well and we were just talking about before the commercial break a big play at the bag alex bregman yeah. twisted his finger back we did find out he did officially break that index finger Ouch. well at least he has time to recover now he's feeling no pain today <laughs> i'm sure he's not time now 445 and 75 degrees for now you have a better chance of being bitten by a shark but that's not stopping people from participating in tonight's record powerball drawing what lottery officials are saying about people's dreams of winning the $1.9 billion. And welcome back. It's 447. Tonight's Powerball jackpot is now a whopping $1.9 billion, the biggest ever. ABC's Phil Lipoff has your chances of winning in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, who wants to be a billionaire? I think it's everybody's dream even to win just a million dollars. But talk about a billion or now almost two billion dollars. It's the largest Powerball pot of all time, 1.9 billion, and it can be yours for just two bucks and a lot of luck. 41 consecutive drawings since the last huge winner took home nearly 700 million in California. As the cash prize goes up, your odds of winning stay the same, a staggering one in 300 million. You have a better chance of being struck by lightning and bitten by a shark. As lottery officials say, larger jackpots are happening more often. They also urge caution. I foster an environment with responsible gaming, so please don't spend money that you wouldn't otherwise spend on fun and games. And we'll have much more on this record-breaking jackpot coming up at 7 a.m. with your GMA First Look. I'm Phil Lipoff, ABC News, New York. All right, let's look outside with Trans Guy looking over at I-35 at New Braunfels Avenue where things are moving. I didn't see too many problems on the other cameras earlier this morning, and we're having Mark look look around. Do you see anything so far? Let's see here. Um, no, nothing right now that I can see. All this stuff is uh, late night leftover stuff on their on their website with a couple of disabled vehicles. But no, it's too early for anything right now. <laughs> well, that's good news for yeah. Monday morning. My question always is. So tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. you look at the ticket, mm -hmm. and it's the winner. What do you physically do with that ticket until you get it turned in? Hold on to it for to keep your it life. <laughs> but I mean, I give it to a dog to hold, 
No, but I'm, I mean, like your homework. <laughs> I would put it in about five Ziploc bags. Oh yeah. And I've said I've duct taped it to my chest, I think, or something. Yeah, so. I was going to ask. I mean, are you going to reveal the whole whole plan? Know. Oh my goodness. Right, so. Yeah, that that seems safe. So duct tape. That's not going to look weird at all, too. <laughs> you duct taping it to your chest. Well, no, you shirt would. on. <laughs> Let us know who gets to rip it off, okay? Oh my goodness. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> Lotto officials in Austin. <laughs> Okay. Go right ahead, if that's the case. <laughs> so anyway, hey, roads are a little bit damp when you uh, step outside this morning. And we've got, uh, yeah, a couple little light uh, showers around the area right now. And there you can see on radar just a few of these. Everything's kind of sliding up to the north. A couple of decent downpours. Mark said he ran into a, a decent downpour here and there, and it lasted what, five minutes maybe? That was about it. That's the exception rather than the rule. These are going to continue to work their way up to the north, and we'll have a couple of scattered sprinkles around throughout the rest of the morning. 74 is the dew point temperature, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, how we figure out relative humidity. Again, the magic number, the threshold number is 60. You get above that, you start to feel it. You get above 70, especially in the 74 degree range. Then that's like fogging up your glasses and everything. And that is going to be sticking around. Comparing to this time yesterday, of course, yesterday we did dip down into the 50s. Nice, pleasant start. The dew point is 41 degrees higher in Hondo than it was yesterday at this time. 25 higher here in town and 28 to higher over there in Spotford and Rock Springs, 23 degrees higher than what it was at this time yesterday. A lot of times we don't see 24 hours that much higher. Now when you get a front moving through, it drops down more significantly. But yeah, it is just a muggy, sultry kind of a morning. Temperatures are gonna be staying steady all morning. We'll keep a few of these light sprinkly showers around here. And that's going to be the case. It's not going to be raining constantly, but just a few of those showers enough to make the roads sort of damp. And then we'll be up in the upper 70s at noon. A little more sunshine thrown on in here today. Sort of a mixture of sunshine and clouds. Still got the chance for a stray shower around here, and we're going to make it up to the mid 80s. So we will be 10 degrees above normal. Computer model does a really good job of showing just a few of these scattered little sprinkly showers around the area. We go into the afternoon, just one or two of them scattered about here. It's not going to be a big deal. And then tomorrow we'll start off plenty of clouds and maybe a stray little sprinkly shower or two. That will be the extent of it. So not a big deal as far as rain, but that's going to be the situation each day this week with the exception of Friday. You're going to like Friday, 79 degrees at noon today, a couple of showers, not much out there. And then a uh, Leftover sprinkler two, one or two showers, 85 for high temperature later on this afternoon. Again, same thing tomorrow, same thing on Wednesday as well as Thursday. Friday morning, that front comes on through here. You know, we always talk about the doozy front. This is shaping up to be that particular front because temperatures, I think we start off 70, only stay steady or drop down a little bit. Blustery down to 48 Saturday morning, only mid 50s on Saturday. We'll be down to 40 on Sunday morning here in town. So do the math, maybe close to freezing in some low lying areas in parts of the hill country Sunday morning. Every front till now, you tell us not to get excited. This, this is the is, one we're allowed to get right excited now about. Is shaping up to be the doozy front, yes. Wow. I know, we're just. <laughs> wow, let me, we gotta process this for a minute, okay? Yeah. So as it's looking right now, I mentioned to Steph, we're gonna be at the, uh, at the Alamo Quarry Saturday yes. night. Santa Claus comes in, lighting all the lights there. I think it's going to be very it's going to be brisk. That's it's good. Going to be, yes, it's going to put right. you in the mood It'll for it. It'll feel so. like the holiday yes. spirit. That's Scarves good. for both of you. 453, <laughs> 75 degrees. A five-time Oscar-nominated studio cartoon classic bring brought to life. Up next, a special first look at My Father's Dragon and where you can watch it. A new animated film heading to Netflix. This week features a story adapted from a classic children's novel. CNN's Rick Damagella has a preview of My Father's Dragon. My father was born a long time ago. Morning, everyone. My Father's Dragon brings the world of Ruth Stiles Gannett's children's novel to life. And he was a child like any other, prone to scraped up knees and flights of fancy. Jacob Tremblay voices Elmer opposite Stranger Things' Gaten Matarazzo as Boris the Dragon. Voicing Elmer was a really fun experience because he's just such a such an ambitious character and honestly probably one of the most ambitious characters I've ever played. Um, I just love his his whole character arc and how he how he he learns how to use his bravery to 
to help bring up others. What do I do now, Elmer? Don't worry, because I'm coming with you. We're gonna do it together. This was like my first big animation, so to kind of go into like a, a, a room uh, with just like the microphone was a little awkward at first for me, because it's a bit of a learning curve. And I actually was able to record with Gaten in the room, which was, which was fantastic. Animation studio Cartoon Saloon took inspiration from the book's illustrations, as well as from imaginations close to home. I uh, asked the children in my life, my, my two boys, to draw the characters. I paid them to draw the characters. <laughs> Between looking at children's imaginations, trying to imagine ourselves as children, trying to take off the kind of constraints that we as adults have, even as artists. Those were things that we really kind of um, hung on to in terms of starting point for the, the design of the film. I'll look after you. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 458, 75 degrees. And tomorrow is a big midterm election day. Up next, we'll hear from the candidates who are making their last minute plea to voters. Plus, uh, you can help San Antonio police solve a murder case still unsolved after it happened more than a year ago. And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide looking at I-10 at Foster Road. Things look okay in this shot, but we will be checking in with our Steven Cavazos. He is in the studio. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The night did not end well for a suspect who police say set a car on fire and tried to rob a group of people at gunpoint. Find out why that suspect is in critical condition this morning. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. A record number of Americans have already voted in the November midterms, and tomorrow, voters cast their final ballots. A look at the key races and what one former president is saying about 2024 coming up. And kind of yucky out there. You could see maybe some raindrops there in our camera lens. 75 degrees looking out there with a live cam. And a good morning to everyone. It is Monday, November 7th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a nice weekend. Yeah. I know stepping out was kind of icky, but uh, at least my car looked like it was washed. So that was a plus. Free car wash. <laughs> and then later on this week, a blow dry from Mother Nature. Big front on the way, right, Mike? Yes, indeed. But we've just got to make it through the next few days because Saturday, of course, was perfect. And then yesterday, the humidity came back in really quickly as expected. And this morning, the humidity is there and then something. I mean, it feels like it, it's midsummer sort of humidity when you step outside. Yep, we do have a few uh, drops on the camera lens right now. 75 degrees. That's actually warmer than what the warmest average low temperature is in the first couple of weeks of August and we're more than 20 degrees above normal right now and that bottom number dew points at 72. Yeah, there's a ton of humidity out there this morning and some of that's getting squeezed out in the form of rain. We're going to make it up to 85 degrees. By the way, we're closer to the high temperature where we should be this time of year than the low obviously and then we're going to be above normal 85 for a high later on this afternoon. The aquifer over the weekend, it did go up four tenths of a foot and the allergens. We do have just a moderate amount of mold in the atmosphere. So take a look at radar right now. We've got just a couple of light little sprinkly showers. I mean, not a heck of a lot. Most of it is just that sort of uh, nuisance rain, just enough to uh, make the roads kind of slippery. Mark said he ran into a decent shower that lasted maybe five minutes or so, and that's the situation around much of the area. As you can see, just a few of these light little sprinkly showers. One of them over here on the uh, northwest side of town. This is a 410 right there around Bandera, heading out in toward Leon Valley. We've had a couple more on the east side of town. They seem to have sort of uh, fizzled on out, and then further up to the north, there was this one cell that moved through Balverde, and that's continuing to slide up to the north. We've got a few more of these light scattered sprinkles out there to the the west in northern Medina County, right around uh, Medina Lake, and then heading in toward Tarpley, up around Medina, and one or two of them crossing over 90 there in Hondo. Again, it's not a big deal, just enough to, well, keep the dust down and make the roads kind of slippery. Visibility is also an issue. Some fog is starting to show up, and especially off to the east, Victoria, two miles visibility right now, five Rock Springs, as well as Fredericksburg. We've got a slight breeze out there, so that may help with uh, not a lot of fog formation, but warm, humid, a couple of showers around this morning, and that's going to be the situation today. 
just one or two of those showers out there, but plenty of clouds, some sunshine thrown in hot and muggy is the best way to describe and it's going to stay that way all week long, warm, humid and a couple of showers around here, just one or two of them. Then we get into Friday. A big cold front is moving on through here. This is going to come through Friday morning. Winds going to be picking up. Temperatures will stay steady or drop a little bit. Stay only in the upper 60s on Friday, mid 50s Saturday and we may see some freezing temperatures in parts of the hill country by Sunday morning. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Mr. Cavazos. What's going on on the road? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we've been keeping a close eye on these TransGuide cameras. The commute is definitely going to be a little bit damp for some folks. So let's get a quick look around town. And there's 37 at Southeast Military. Uh, a shot we're going to actually have to talk a little bit more about in detail. A crash was actually reported there by TxDOT about 10 minutes ago, but we'll get a closer look and find out the location, but you can see around town. It's pretty quiet. Only those lucky few are pretty much out there this morning. So just remember to take it easy. Thankfully, no major issues are slowing drivers down. There's not really a lot of going out there. 281 at Hildebrand and as you get another shot there at 35 at St. Mary's, but you can see some of these trans guide cameras are capturing those damp roadways like US 90 at couples, but the commutes definitely picking up there. However, I did mention there is that crash that we're going to have to get a closer look at here at 37 southbound. It's right there near South Cross Boulevard, and you saw that camera from Southeast Military on train guide really couldn't see a lot out there. There are several cameras along I 37, but I'm not seeing any flashing lights out there. However, just remember to drive safe if you are planning to hit the roads in the next few minutes. As we get that wide look at the map, it's really going to be just talking about some of those active construction spots you need to be on the lookout for. But if you're going to be traveling into the Alamo City, those northbound lanes on I 37 look pretty pleasant from Pleasanton. 29 minutes at this hour. If you plan on hitting the roadways, US 90 looks like the usual time about 30 minutes, but you could notice the commute is already picking up and right now that arrival from Lytle, it looks to be about 16 minutes on I 35 northbound. Let's get you back here on trans guide. There's 37 again at Southeast Military. No flashing lights out there, but we'll keep a close eye on things and have those updates on road closures in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. A security guard shoots a man overnight after San Antonio police say that man set a car on fire and tried to rob a group of people. It happened just after midnight at the Perfect Tens Men's Club in the 100 block of Northwest Loop 410. Police say the suspect set a car on fire at a nearby gas station on Perrin Central and then stole another car. Police say the man then drove into the Perfect Tens parking lot and crashed into several parked vehicles. He then lowered his car window and tried to rob a group of people with a rifle. That's when police say a security guard saw the gun and shot the suspect in the head. A suspect was taken to a hospital in critical condition. This morning, we are hearing from the family of a missing man. Bear County Sheriff deputies and the family of 25-year-old Austin Travis Wiseman are asking for your help. He was last seen a week ago yesterday in Somerset near 9th and Somerset Road around 7 a.m. His family says that morning he planned to make a stop at home before work, but he never made it there. The family is concerned for Wiseman's safety. They say he is diagnosed with a serious medical condition that requires medication. We are desperate. Again, like he stated, this is not normal behavior. We are in constant communication. We were together the whole day before. Now they tell us he was last seen wearing a New York Mets baseball jersey with black pants and driving a 2013 red Cadillac ATS. The license plate RJM7823. The family says the rear camera is damaged and hanging from the car. If you know where Wiseman could be, you are asked to call the sheriff's office at number 210-335-6000. San Antonio Police Crime Stoppers are still trying to solve a murder case that happened more than a year ago. 22-year-old Troy Lee was killed back on June 28, 2021 in the 6100 block of Ingram Road in front of the Hilltop Oaks Apartments. When officers arrived, Lee was already unresponsive and taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead from stab wounds. If you have any information on the case, please call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You could get a cash reward for information you provide. Well, tomorrow is the big day for the pivotal midterm elections. As ABC's Just Advent reports, with control of Congress on the line, presidents past and present hit the campaign trail this weekend in a final push to get their voters to the polls. After months of campaigning, candidates and their surrogates making their closing cases in tightening contest. From the red-hot Senate races in Georgia. A radical idea nowadays, character matters. 
Truth telling matters. Integrity matters. We're in a spiritual battle right now, are we not? We're in a spiritual battle. To Arizona. Do we think the red wave is dead? To Pennsylvania. The energy in Bucks County is just amazing. The Keystone State, a way station for three presidents. President Biden joining former President Obama for a rare joint appearance. Truth and facts and logic and reason and basic decency are on the ballot. Democracy itself is on the ballot. Fetterman and Republican opponent Mehmet Oz are in a close race for Pennsylvania's open Senate seat. Second. Former President Trump rallying with Oz. And if you want to stop the destruction of our country and save the American dream this Tuesday, you must go out and vote Republican in this giant red wave. The former president also teasing his own entry into the 2024 presidential race as soon as today. President Biden campaigning in New York, reminding voters what's at stake. This election isn't a referendum, it's a choice. It's a choice between two fundamentally different visions of America. And many Americans are voting early, with more than 40 million ballots already cast, surpassing early voting numbers from the 2018 midterms. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And if you scan this QR code on your screen right now, it will take you to our election coverage page. There you will find everything you need to know before you head to the polls. And KSET will have complete coverage tomorrow night as the polls close, as well as complete results from the midterms Wednesday morning right here on GMSA. Tonight is the night to see if someone wins that latest record high Powerball jackpot. What is now is just shy of $2 billion. Saturday's drawing for the record prize did not have a winner. Texas didn't even have a consolation $1 million prize winner. However, according to the Texas Lottery, Texans spent more than $24 million in tickets for Saturday's drawing. That's more than $39,000 per minute. The next drawing will take place tonight. Good luck from all of us at GMSA and KSAT 12. Remember your friends tomorrow morning. Yes, remember your friends on GMSA, right? That's right. Time now, 5'11 and 75 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, why Apple is thinking about changing the way you talk to your digital assistant the one that's spelled S-I-R-I. I don't want to set it off. I know. Yeah. Too early. 5.12 a.m. Too early. And today, city leaders and owners will decide what to do with the now burned down Midnight Rodeo Club and Bar. What a former DJ is saying about his three decades of working at the club. I side with live cam on your Monday. Very muggy out there. We've seen some rain on some of the roads and camera lenses around town. So just expect that as you head out the door this morning. Do we have any accidents? We'll talk to Stephen coming up and get a look at when that big whopper of a cold front is due in South Texas. 515 today, Assistant City Attorney Eric Burns says the city is set to meet with the owners of the now burned down Midnight Rodeo Nightclub to discuss the future of the property. This past weekend, community members gathered to remember the nightclub that used to be a staple in San Antonio. This weekend, several supporters showed up to the property, now flattened to rubble, to share memories with well-known DJ Peter Anderberg. He served at Midnight Rodeo's head DJ for more than three decades. All the people that have come here for so many years, that they're not just customers, they're family. And the same thing with the staff. Everybody's ever worked here, come here to play it. And the cause of that fire is still under investigation. 516, 75 degrees. And still, real life changes in the metaverse. Why Facebook's parent company says it is planning to lay off thousands of employees this week. Check the trans guy. We do see an issue now, 410 at Rolling Ridge. You see the roads are very wet in that part of town. We're going to get a live update from Stephen Cavazos coming up after the break. Did you know you can save with GoodRx, even if you have insurance? You know, I thought my prescription was covered until it wasn't, but GoodRx helps with that. I work for myself, so I buy my own insurance, and I still check GoodRx. I'm on Medicare. I check GoodRx because it can beat my copay. Who wouldn't like that? Even if you have insurance, GoodRx can help you save. Okay, we'll see you next time. Another good reason to check GoodRx. Breakthrough heartburn means your heartburn treatment 
is broken. Try Zegrit OTC. It contains the leading medicine to treat frequent heartburn. Uniquely designed for absorption. Get all day, all night relief with Zegrit OTC. Wish your car's air freshener didn't start so strong and then fade too soon? Try Febreze Car Vent Clips. Unlike other fresheners, Febreze releases a consistent amount of scent day after day for 40 days. Won't overwhelm, won't fade away. Febreze Car. Love it or get your money back. Time check is 5:19, and uh, we see these flashing lights. We showed these flashing lights to you as we went to commercial break, and unfortunately, just not a good situation uh, right now. This has been reported as a crash. Just spoke to our friends at Transguide on the phone, and you can see uh, that's actually about three lanes that look like they are blocked off. But notice how also the roads also look a little wet out there, and uh, vehicles as they're making their way on by are having to switch on over uh, to the far right left lane there. So just watch out. This is the first crash that we're seeing on the Transguide cameras. There was another one reported along I-37. Looks like that has cleared out, but just a heads up, this is going to be along the westbound lanes, not far from Evers Road. And notice that there's already a light buildup taking place right behind me. So just something to be on the lookout for. Let's hope everybody's doing okay out there, but that's something I'll keep my close eye on. But giving you the wide look at the map, you can see uh, we do have another crash. It looks like it popped up over near 410 off of 151. Doesn't appear that it's uh, near anywhere where there, there are trans guide cameras, but another area we'll have to watch closely throughout the morning. Let's get you to some construction as well. Just a heads up as if you're driving through Loop 1604 north central side of San Antonio, there is some bridge widening work taking place. Uh, it starts today around 9 in the morning and should wrap around 3 in the afternoon. This will wrap on Friday, November 11th. But during that time, expect to see the westbound and eastbound turnaround, a full closure there at Loop 1604 and Lock Hill Selma Road. But if you're at home, grab those phones right now and open your camera app. Scan that QR code by tapping the center of your screen. I just updated the full list of closures that are taking place in and around the Alamo City, so plan your commute ahead of time. But Mike, we're going to have to keep a close eye on some of these damp roadways. Yeah, it's just we've had a lot of light sprinkles around the area all morning long. That in just one second. Beautiful view from Friday night. Of course, some of those storms building. The moon is going to be full tomorrow, and it's a... a uh, also a lunar eclipse tomorrow. The total lunar eclipse last one that we're going to be seeing for about the next three years. Now, as far as us seeing it here, we're going to have a lot of clouds hanging around here. So unless the clouds just kind of part and it's going to be right before uh, the sun comes up tomorrow morning is when the full lunar eclipse takes place. But again, we're going to have a lot of clouds hanging around here. All right, back to those wet roads. This is 410 over there at uh, I-10 on the northwest side. A lot of rain on the camera lens. But, you know, big picture of things, it, there's not really a heck of a lot out there. However, you zoom in and it's all falling in just kind of the, the right spots. We've had a lot of these light little showers just kind of sliding on through the area over to the uh, north and west. We've had this one which has moved right up almost along Bandera Road and then a couple of more sprinkles over there. Bandera and that section of 1604 where there's usually a lot of traffic and also a lot of that construction over there and then a few more of those uh, showers that are sliding on into right around Medina Lake. That's good to get one right around Medina Lake and boy if that little spot right there if that could just sit there for a little while and fill up Medina Lake that would be perfect but over around Tarpley and then the uh, town of Medina we've got a few more of these showers and again there's not much out there. It is just very few and far between. That's going to be the situation throughout the not only the rest of the morning, but also this afternoon. So we've got that 40% chance for a light little shower here. Temperatures aren't going anywhere. We're in the uh, low mid 70s right now, and it's going to stay that way all morning long. Then we'll make it up through just the uh, mid 80s later on today. We're closer to the normal high temperature right now than the normal low, and that's above normal with that chance for a couple of showers out there. Just a few of them. I mean, computer models are not really bullish on this at all as far as any rain today, and that's going to be the situation the next couple of days as well. Speaking of which, dew points are going to stay very muggy this week, and then look at how they drop like a rock, and that's what temperatures are going to be doing as well. We get a big front moving on through here, and boy, it, you're going to notice this one Friday and especially on Saturday, and then by Sunday morning, we are looking at temperatures to be down right around 40 that's here in town, which means in the hill country, we're looking at potential uh, temperatures touching freezing by Sunday morning. 79 at noon today. Couple leftover little light showers around the area, and that's going to be the situation this afternoon as well. 85, a shower or two out there. Just one or two of them. Very warm and muggy, very warm and muggy. Same thing tomorrow as well as Wednesday, as well as Thursday. Front moves through early Friday. Temperatures will stay steady or even drop a little bit throughout the day. Windy 
And then Saturday, 55 degrees, breezy, cloudy skies, 40 Sunday morning. What a wonderful weekend. What a, yes. I, I post on social. Mike says the first big Whopper cold front is coming this weekend. George Briscoe wrote, does that Whopper come with pickles and ketchup? <laughs> I walked right into that. No, but it comes with wind. So. It comes with wind. It does. Okay, that'll do. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you, Mike. you, Mike. 524, 74 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, two, two. Wait, where was I? Two, two, two. Fireball zero. Daily four, five, zero, one, four. Fireball six. That first one's a lot to track, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> well, cash five numbers three, 19, 22, 27, 28. Lotto Texas one, 14, 18, 29, 42, 53. There's Powerball from the other night. So the big drawing is tonight, and it's probably going to be right at $2 billion by the time they uh, do the drawing during the night beat at 10. We'll be back. In today's tech fights, job cuts possibly coming to Meta. Facebook's parent company is not commenting on a report that large-scale layoffs will begin this week. According to the Wall Street Journal, an announcement could come as early as Wednesday, and it could impact thousands of workers. Twitter is delaying the rollout of its paid subscription plan until after the midterm elections. It was supposed to launch today, but it has been pushed back now to Wednesday. The blue check mark given to verified Twitter accounts will soon be available to any Twitter blue user for $7.99 per month. And Apple is reportedly making moves to simplify commands for Siri. Users will no longer have to say, hey Siri, and can simply say Siri instead. Bloomberg reports Apple has been working on the change for several months now and hopes to roll it out soon. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rihanna Nally. Have a great day. Time now, 528 and 74 degrees for now. As candidates make their final push before election day tomorrow, some elections officials are holding a kind of campaign, too, for public confidence. What they're doing to reassure voters their votes will matter. And wasting your money. Why a new study says you should stop spending money on some popular vitamins and supplements that claim to help your heart. Our priority is making sure that just as our elections always have been safe and secure and accessible to all, as candidates urge people to vote, how election officials are trying to encourage them to trust in safe and secure races. A security guard says he stopped an armed robbery by shooting a man. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why police say that that marked the end of a night of trouble for that man. And good Monday morning. It's 74 degrees out there, humid and kind of spotty showers here and there, but kind of gross and yucky for now, for now though. <laughs> Right now, it is Monday. It is November 7th. And yeah, the roads are slick in some spots out there this morning, yes. Stephen. Yeah, you see those flashing lights out mm -hmm. there, 410 still. So we're going to have to watch closely. All right, more on that coming up. We will. And take a look at this uh, camera out there. We do have a couple of drops on the lens right now. And that pretty much uh, sums it up. Most of it is just that little light nuisance sort of rain. There are a couple of decent showers here and there around the area. We've got 75 degrees been holding steady for the past couple of hours. That is closer to the normal high temperature and more than 20 degrees above where we should be as far as the normal low and the dew point is extremely high as well up to 72. Of course, Saturday was an absolutely perfect day. The humidity started to come back in here yesterday and yep, now we just got a whole bunch of humidity hanging around here and we've got these showers which are continuing to work their way up to the north and as you can see, there's not much in and around town as of right now. We've got a few of them over here in Bandera County, Northern Medina County sliding up to the north and the Again, we've had a few here in town. The only thing really showing up is right there on the, about 35 on the southwest side of town. Just a few of these light little showers. And again, zooming in even more, maybe a few of them here along 35 on the southwest side. But again, this is what is detectable on radar. A lot of it may still be some mist. Notice out there by uh, 410 and I-10, nothing is showing up on radar, but we definitely have some of those uh, little spots on the camera lens right there. There was that one little uh, spot of rain that moved right through put those drops on the camera lens. As far as visibility, we've got some fog out there. Six miles of visibility at New Braunfels, seven Port SA, eight Stinson, and thicker off to the east. But fog's not a huge issue as of right now. Just a little bit of it out there. Just basically watch out for the damp roads. Molten's on the moderate side. The updated count's going to come out in an hour, hour and a half. 79 at noon, 85 high temperature, more than 10 above normal couple of light little sprinkly showers, one or two of them out there. That's going to be the case for the next few days. Tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, then 
big changes coming in here Friday. You're going to love you love fall weather. You're going to love this weekend forecast details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority Stephen, you said saw some flashing lights. Yeah, so we'll have them right here uh, on our trans guide cameras. Mike, uh, so earlier we talked about a crash along 37 that had actually cleared out. This was actually taking place in the southbound lanes, but now a new crash has been reported this time in the northbound lane. So drivers that are making their way into Pleasanton uh, in from Pleasanton, I should say, may see those flashing lights out there, but it doesn't look like we have a whole lot of traffic, so that's good news. But nonetheless, watch out for the drivers. Watch out for those first responders working to clear this situation up. We'll keep a close eye on it. But again, 37 northbound right near South Cross Boulevard is where the crash has been reported. No buildup is taking place, as you just saw on that trans guide camera. Not a lot of folks out there this early in the morning, so hopefully that will help improve the situation. But we're still watching the situation up over here at 410. Uh, in fact, within the last few moments, I did notice that there are no flashing lights here along 410 anymore. So it looks like that crash may have just cleared better news out there to report. But we give you a wide look at the map and it is actually getting a lot busier. Notice that we actually have another crash that popped up along US 90. We're going to have to get that on our map in the next few minutes. But right now, let's check those travel times. If you are heading in from Seguin right now this early in the morning, 29 minutes. So it's still pretty green on I-10 westbound if you are planning to hit the roadways in the next few minutes. Right now, 87 northbound. It looks like about a 33 minute drive time for our friends in Lavernia. And for our friends down in Floresville, about 28 minutes if you're traveling in to the Alamo City. But I wanted to get back to this shot here at US 90 at 35. Already a pretty big stretch of vehicles out there, and that's because that crash has been reported in the eastbound lanes. We'll have those updates throughout the morning, but right now, uh, just make sure to drive safe if you plan to hit the roadways. Mark Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say gunfire has brought a wild overnight crime spree to an end. They say a security guard shot a man in his head just as he was committing another crime. That shooting happened outside a strip club called Perfect 10 near Loop 410 in McCullough. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, we understand that is not where the trouble started. Well, that's right. Police tell us that uh, this man first came onto their radar after a car fire at a gas station over on Perrin Road. They believe that man, the one who was shot here, actually started that fire inside what was a, a stolen car, then made his way here. And in this parking lot, we can see signs of how things ended. There's broken glass and blood on the ground here. The police say that the man had a rifle and was trying to rob someone outside Perfect 10 when a security guard sh shot him around 1230 this morning. He was wounded in his head and taken to a hospital. Before that, though, police say he had caused quite a bit of damage here by driving into other cars in the parking lot of the strip club. They say all of this happened, though, after he allegedly started that car fire at the gas station over on Perrin Bidal. The police say both the burned car and the one that the man was in here when he was shot were stolen. And that man was taken to a hospital. The last word we had was that he was in critical condition. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Tomorrow is, of course, Election Day, and as candidates rally supporters down to the last minute, some election officials are getting out messages of their own. As CNN's Amy Kylie reports, they want people to trust in safe and secure voting. The question is, who's going to stand up for ordinary people? Follow me, I'll take you to the promised land. It's the day before the midterm elections. Candidates are trying one last time to win over voters. We're not a sanctuary state. You want health care? I like Charlie Crist. Some elections officials are also holding a kind of campaign for public confidence. Our priority is making sure that just as our elections always have been safe and secure and accessible to all, that they will be again on Tuesday. The Michigan Secretary of State says her department will have more partners in the field tomorrow than during any past election. We have folks who are prepared to immediately respond to anyone who tries to intimidate any voters. Georgia has a new elections app. It allows people to call in law enforcement or just report issues. The Secretary of State there has said his family endured threats after he upheld the results of the 2020 presidential race. Now his own name is on the ballot. I'm going to accept the results of my race, and I'd encourage everyone holding themselves out to running for office. You follow the law and you follow the Constitution, and you accept the will of the people. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. If you scan the QR code on your screen right now, it'll take you to our election coverage page. You'll find everything you need to know before you head to the polls tomorrow. Case out, we'll have complete coverage tomorrow night as the polls close, and we'll get you updated on those results from the midterms Wednesday evening right here 
on uh, weather Wednesday morning right here on GMSA. Well, starting today, more than 100 world leaders are set to talk about what some scientists are calling Earth's biggest challenge. It'll be the first day of high-level international climate talks in Egypt, with more to come in the following days. Much of the focus will be on national leaders telling their stories of being devastated by climate disasters, where leaders of China, India, and Russia will not be there. North Korea's military says its recent barrage of missile tests were practices to mercilessly strike key South Korean and U.S. targets. The North's military says its missile tests were reaction to last week's massive Air Force drills between the U.S. and South Korea, which Pyongyang views as invasion rehearsal. The announcement underscored leader Kim Jong-un's determination not to back down in the face of his rival's push to expand their military exercises. But some experts say Kim also eventually wants to use their drills as an excuse to modernize his nuclear arsenal. Elon Musk says his Twitter will permanently suspend any account that impersonates another. The social media platform's new owner issued the warning after some celebrities changed their Twitter display names not their account names to Elon Musk. It was in reaction to the billionaire's decision to offer verified accounts to all comers for $8 a month. Comedian Kathy Griffin had her account suspended on Sunday for switching her display name to Musk's. Time now, 541 and 74 degrees for now. You know those supplements and vitamins you take to try to keep your heart healthy? A new study is suggesting they don't really do anything. And the big midterm election is tomorrow. Up next, we have a UTSA political expert who is answering some of the most important questions and concerns for voters headed to the polls. Outside with live cam, we're gonna check on the roads coming up with Stephen Cavazos because it is wet out there in several spots around the Alamo City. And Mike says that big, huge cold front, the first big humdinger of the season is on the way later this week. Well, election day is tomorrow, and for some, there are still a lot of questions when it comes to what's on the ballot and some of the candidates. John Taylor, chair of the Department of Political Science at UTSA, joined us on Leading SA this weekend to answer those questions. Good morning. Yes, Professor John Taylor joined us, and we talked about a lot. We talked about the wide range of candidates. We talked about the early voting numbers, and we talked about how the number this year is substantially smaller than the number of early voters we saw in 2018. Here's a bit of our conversation. Well, a couple of reasons come into play. One, we don't have a Senate race, a really competitive Senate race, as we did in 18. Um, additionally, because you have really, really tight Senate races in Arizona, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Florida, and elsewhere, the money and the interest is going there. The result is, is that, honestly, th there's the other angle here, too, I should notice and note, and it's this. Bill O'Rourke and Greg Abbott are known quantities. People are not excited necessarily because they've seen them on the ballot several times. So there's just not as much enthusiasm for whatever reason, which seems odd given the the, the issues and the, and the questions that come into play. We also talked about the voting and counting of the votes process. You can catch our full conversation right now. Just head to the leading essay section of ksat.com. And of course, election day is tomorrow and we have all of the resources that you need to know before you hit the polls online. Guys, back to you. 545, 74 degrees. And we all want to keep our heart healthy, and you would think things like fish oil and garlic would help. Why a new study says all that is just a waste of money. Welcome back in your consumer headlines. Most commonly used over-the-counter supplements for heart health do not help lower cholesterol. Let that sink in for a second. Though ads may say fish oil, garlic, cinnamon, turmeric, and others are heart healthy, that may not be the case. According to a new study in the American Journal of Cardiology and a side-by-side -side comparison with a statin medication and placebo, they failed. Only the statin actually reduced cholesterol and triglyceride levels by a significant amount. One author called the so-called heart-healthy vitamins and supplements, quote, snake oil, end quote. Researchers say most American adults are unaware that most dietary supplements are not tested in double-blind clinical trials. So now you know. 
Wow, interesting. And a look over at the Trans Guy cameras looking at flashing lights there at I-35 at Highway 90. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, this is not something people want to wake up to. And if you are at home, good for you. But make sure you plan your commute ahead of time, especially if you are traveling along US 90. Let's get that wide look at Trans Guide. We have first responders that are out there on the scene. If you're just waking up with us, uh, mention that there was a crash actually reported right there in those eastbound lanes. And as you get that shot at Trans Guide, we do have those first responders out there. Roads also appear to be a little wet as well, but uh, notice this is a pretty heavy presence that we're seeing. Uh, we are also seeing that delay, unfortunately, as we take you right to the map. If you are traveling US 90 exiting on I 35 northbound, be aware you may see this delay and experience that because we have some orange that's building there along those eastbound lanes and that yellow a little further up along 35 northbound. And unfortunately, Monday's just been off to a, a pretty busy start. We have to head over to this other crash along 37. Those northbound lanes are already seeing an impact due to a crash reported along those northbound lanes uh, at South Cross Boulevard and we see the delay uh, also in the trans guide cameras. It's just shaping up to be a busy morning on the roadways, giving you the wide look at the map. Thankfully, it's quiet everywhere else, but we know we're entering that busy time. You call it morning rush. Yeah, but I wouldn't say no need to rush this morning. There are no delays reported everywhere else, but be on the lookout. We are going to continue to see some utility work here along FM 1535 Northwest Military Highway. Just a heads up. Uh, keep in mind this will start today around seven in the morning and continue all the way up until six in the evening. So it's going to last quite a while, uh, but just make sure you plan your commute ahead of time. This information is posted on our website. It's ksat.com slash traffic. But if you travel through Northwest Military, you notice that work all the time, but we're going to have to keep a very close eye here along 35 at US 90. It's just again been off to a pretty busy start on the roadways, unfortunately. And here we are one week into no shave yes. November. It's going very well. Everybody's looking dapper as heck. You said yes. we've got about two grand almost. Yes, we have about two grand raised. So special shout out to all of our donors. Our community has mm -hmm. been yes. fantastic. Uh, we talk about this all the time, uh, raising funds for cancer research, treatment mm -hmm. and prevention. And uh, we're going to start to hear from some of our team members about why we're participating and everyone has a special reason as to why they're doing this. And some of us haven't met the deadline to submit those testimonials yet and we're going to get on that. <laughs> Mark, Austin. Yes, this is a public call. <laughs> yes, it is. It'll be fine. <laughs> we'll get it done. Yes. All right, as he was talking about wet roads and pretty much even though it's not raining where you are right now, consider the roads being wet just because we have had a lot of light showers around the area all pretty much all night long. Great shot and you don't take your butterfly for a walk, but I'm sure the dogs would be interested in this. And uh, we like all those pet pictures, so scan that QR code and send us in some of your uh, KSAC Connect pictures. But a great shot of that monarch butterfly. Thank you very much for that. All right, uh, no drops on the lens right now, but if you look closer, you can see that 410 I-10 is definitely on the damp side. And we don't really have that much in the way of a lot of rain around the area right now. Now, just a couple little well right there around uh, getting in toward Clark High School. A couple of showers a little bit further up to the north right around uh, 281 1604. A couple of these light little showers a few more off to the uh, south and west. We've had a few of them as you can see go through the medical center. Just a couple of those showers. So we've had a lot pretty much all around the area so far this morning. There are a few more out in portions of the hill country. This is some good news right there around the uh, drainage basin of Medina Lake and heading out in toward Bandera County. Just a, a couple of them out there, and that's going to be the situation throughout the rest of today as well. So these few showers around this morning, temperatures aren't going anywhere. We may fluctuate a couple of degrees, but right now we're at 75. And then a little bit of sunshine thrown in today. I don't think a whole lot. We'll make it up to 79 at noon, and then a high temperature today up to 85. And that may be kind of generous with these these graphics showing a little more sunshine out there, but we will have plenty of uh, clouds hanging around and also that small chance for still a stray shower around later on this afternoon, which is what computer models are indicating. Not a lot, but again, just these few little sprinkles here and there one or two of them by later on today. That's going to be the situation the next couple of days as well. It stays very, very humid the next few days. Then look at how things just drop like a rock coming in here by Friday. That's the big front that's going to be moving through. That will knock temperatures down. We are going to be staying well above normal throughout the rest of most of the week 
and then uh, then we drop off, like I said, on Friday. So 79 at noon, a couple of showers here and there. Same thing later on this afternoon. Not a big deal, just enough to make the roads kind of slippery out there. Same thing tomorrow as well as Wednesday, Thursday, Friday front comes through. We start off 70, 68, maybe a sprinkle windy. And then look at that 55 on Saturday down to 40 by Sunday morning is going to be a great fall weekend. More after this. Right now, it's about three minutes till six. The Share the Shoes campaign is underway, benefiting Zapatos. Zapatos works with schools to help kids get the shoes they need. Donations will be accepted until December 16th. You can drop them off at any of the SAPD substations. New socks are also being accepted. You can find more information about all this on the KSAT community page at ksat.com. Hope you will. Still ahead on the next hour of a morning show, you might think you're eating healthy, but are you really? What well, you need to know that can make a huge difference. Plus, Astros fans, you ready to celebrate that World Series win with the champs? We'll tell you what you need to know about Big Today's parade over in Houston. And up next, San Antonio FC, one win away from their own championship. What they need to, need to do, rather, to take that final step. And Trans Guide, the morning is going to be tricky, folks. And here's one of our problem spots tracking right now. 35 at Highway 90. We've had enough rain to cause some slick spots. And traffic is building on your early Monday morning. We'll be right back. If you have anything, even if it's something small, if it can lead to any answers for us. This morning, a local family feeling lost, but not giving up after one of their own vanished a week ago. What they're doing to find answers. Plus, things did not end well for a man who San Antonio police say set a car on fire and tried to rob some people at gunpoint. We'll tell you what happened next in just moments. And a quick look out there with live cans starting off humid and spotty showers here and there. You might want to be careful on the roadways. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Sure does. Good morning, everybody. It's six o'clock on your Monday. It is November 7th. Happy Monday. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for starting your week with us. Uh, it's going to be a little iffy on the roadways. Grab your umbrella as you head out the door just to be safe. Mike is bookending our week with some interesting weather news, especially towards the latter half of the week. Yeah, latter half of the week. We've we got to take care of what's going on right now. First of all, latter half of the week is going to be fantastic. Not to give anything away with my enthusiasm, but uh, OK, we've got, you know, the camera it just showed over there by the airport. No drops on the lens, but that's definitely the situation out there. 410 at I-10. The road is on the slippery side. You know, big picture, there's not really a heck of a lot out there. Just a few of these light little sprinkly showers, but it's been, you know, little spots here and there all morning long. So just assume that all of the roads are damp this morning. And as you can see, just a few of these light little sprinkles that are moving through town right now. Now we've got a few of them over there right around, say, 281 over by the airport or just north of the airport. And then just about military at 1604. A couple of them on the west side. And yeah, there's that one little spot right there that's putting those uh, drops on the camera lens over there, 410. Or it's actually 10 right there at Callahan where the, the camera is. And then a few more further on out to the west. Got a couple of uh, showers moving on through Bandera County and then a few more heading in toward Medina Lake. This will be the situation all day long. Just little spots here and there. Some fog, not much. Six miles visibility at uh, New Braunfels, five Uvalde, three Victoria. Nothing real pea soup fog. We just kind of watch out for that. And where there's some of this fog, there may be a little bit of that mist if it's thick enough. Mold is on the moderate side. Updated count's going to come out in about an hour, hour and a half. Temperatures, we're in the mid-70s right now. May fluctuate a degree or two, but basically we aren't going to be dropping down. We're 20 degrees above the normal low temperature right now and then we're going to make it up into the upper 70s today at noon. High temperature makes it into the mid 80s, so 10 degrees above normal. Plenty of humidity out there. Couple little sprinkly showers, just one or two of them. That'll be about the extent of it. We'll do the same thing tomorrow. We'll do the same thing Wednesday as well as Thursday. Then we've got that big front moving on through here. Temperatures are going to be dropping like a rock. Could we see some freezing readings by later in the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, what's going on? Uh, yeah, that same thing, Mike, that we had over in the last hour. Problems along US 90 there at 35. That's a delay we mentioned a little bit earlier. Just notice, I'll step out of the shot so you can see those flashing lights out there on Transguide. If you are traveling east along US 90, trying to get on a 35 northbound, 
Look for some different routes this morning if you can. I'll be doing the same thing because we have a pretty big crash that's been reported. Uh, been there for about half an hour or so. When you can see right now, traffic's not really moving along that area. So just something to keep on your radar if you plan on traveling in from Castorville or just anywhere from 90, perhaps into the downtown area. We'll keep a close eye on it. But again, as a reminder, just look at that mess there in the map. US 90 eastbound at 35, exiting to, thir uh, exiting to 35 northbound is where we see that delay already taking place. It's been a pretty busy morning. But as we're keeping a close eye on this particular situation, we've also spotted some progress right there along 37 northbound where we had a second crash reported at South Cross Boulevard. Good news is I'm not seeing flashing lights out there, although it is still being reported by TxDOT. It looks like that crash may have already cleared out. So let's give you a wide look at the map now. While it has been a busy start, everywhere else is uh, thankfully looking pretty quiet. And uh, that's pretty much the same story if you're going to be traveling in from these communities along I-10. That journey from Bernie right now, 24 minutes is what you can expect to the downtown area. 281 southbound, seeing a little bit of a buildup already heading in from Bulverde, but I would say that's still no need to hurry. And 25 minutes. Minutes. It's not too awful from New Braunfels on I-35 southbound this morning. Uh, let's get it back here to Transguide. Just not a good shot along US-90 at 35, but we're going to continue to watch these roads closely. Make sure you are doing the same. Mark Stuff. Stephen, thank you. Seeing a bit. A man is in the hospital this morning after a wild night ends in a shooting. San Antonio police say that man set a car on fire and tried to rob a group of people. It happened just after midnight at the Perfect 10 Men's Club in the 100 block of Northwest Loop 410. Police say the suspect set a car on fire at a nearby gas station on Perrin Central Boulevard before stealing another car. The man then drove into the Perfect 10 parking lot, crashing into several parked cars. He then lowered his car window and tried to rob a group of people with a rifle. That's when police say a security guard saw the gun and shot the suspect in the head. That suspect was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Meanwhile, a man was sitting on his porch on San Antonio's east side when he was shot in the leg overnight. San Antonio police say it happened just after 10 p.m. in the 800 block of Iowa near South Pine. SAPD says someone in a white vehicle drove by and started shooting. The man was hit and taken to a hospital. So far, there's no official word on his condition or any suspect information. This morning, we are hearing from the family of a missing man. Bear County Sheriff deputies and the family of 25-year-old Austin Travis Wiseman are asking for your help. He was last seen a week ago yesterday in Somerset near 9th and Somerset Road around 7 a.m. His family says that morning he had planned to make a stop at home before going to work, but he never got home. His family is concerned for Wiseman's safety. They say he is diagnosed with a serious medical condition that requires medication. We are desperate. Again, like he stated, this is not normal behavior. We are in constant communication. We were together the whole day before. He was last seen wearing a New York Mets baseball jersey with black pants and driving a 2013 red Cadillac ATS. License plate RJM7823. The family says the rear camera is damaged and hanging from the car. If you know where Wiseman is, you're asked to call the sheriff's office at number 210-335-6000. Well, tomorrow is the big day, the pivotal midterm elections. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, with control of Congress on the line, presidents past and present are hitting the campaign trail in a final push to get voters to the polls. Good morning. Both parties are dispatching their highest profile messengers to battleground states to win over voters on the issues polls show matter to them most, the economy and inflation. After months of campaigning, candidates and their surrogates making their closing cases in tightening contest. From the red-hot Senate races in Georgia. Character matters. Truth-telling matters. Integrity matters. We're in a spiritual battle right now, are we not? To Arizona. Do we think the red wave is dead? No. To Pennsylvania. It's the energy in Bucks County is just amazing. President Biden joining former President Obama for a rare joint appearance. Truth and facts and logic and reason and basic decency are on the ballot. Former President Trump rallying with us. This Tuesday, you must go out and vote Republican in this giant red wave. President Biden reminding voters what's at stake. 
It's a choice between two fundamentally different visions of America. And many Americans are voting early, with more than 40 million ballots already cast, surpassing early voting numbers from the 2018 midterms. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And back here at home, if you scan this QR code on your screen right now, it will take you to our election coverage page. There you will find everything you need to know before you head to the polls. KSET will have complete coverage tomorrow night as the polls close, as well as complete results from the midterms Wednesday right here on GMSA. Going to be a busy couple of days. Well, on a lighter note, we're week two of No Shave November, and the scruff, as we lovingly call it, is really starting to come in. Very nicely. Stephen Cavazos joins us now to tell us how things are looking. Good morning, Stephen. Whiskers for me. Every whisker counts. You guys have a script. I have the whiskers, but that's okay. We all kind of have our teams. Mike always talks about team silver. Silver, silver right here. Gray, white, so, okay. Silver, gray, all white. Above. Team whiskers over here. Okay. Okay. Mark. Uh, just Team Mark. Team Mark. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> you know what, but we've been doing pretty fantastic. We're in day seven of November, and our team has raised close to $2,000. So awesome. first, huge, big thank you to the community. But let's nice. take a look at that leaderboard, because it, it, we here at KSAT, we love the bragging rights. David Sears, over the weekend, received a pretty generous donation Five hundred dollars, nice. which is put him right into first place. Yes. Right into first place, and yeah. that's fantastic. So thank you to that special donor, Mark Austin, right behind you, three fifty-five. Mm -hmm. Steve Kavazos in third with three twenty-five. Three hundred and twenty-five dollars. Nice. Uh, Jonathan Gotha doing also pretty well, yeah. one seventy-five. Max Massey right behind him at top five. We got one twenty-five for Max. I feel like I'm seeing the lottery numbers right now. I know. Yeah, and Justin Horn uh, tied with Max at six uh, with one twenty-five as well. But obviously, all the funds that we're raising right now are going to go back toward helping with these foundations, 13 cancer foundations for cancer research, treatment and prevention, which obviously makes our mission so important here at Team KSAT. Our goal is to raise over $20,000 and we know we can do it whisker by whisker. So if you are at home right now, we're asking you to get your phones out and you can snap a picture of this QR code. It's right there. That will take you directly to our KSAT No Shave page and there you can learn more on how to donate. Donate to any one of these members of the team and or as a team as a whole. Mike Osrange <laughs> had to jump in the shot. He's making a plea for team gray hair, which silver is, hair. Which there is, he is. Which is under Mike, Team right? Whiskers or just team Mark. Steph, we're still needing to know who, you, who, 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 who Steph's choice. Who gets the rose. Yeah. Yeah. Who gets the rose. <laughs> who gets Steph. the rose and wins. <laughs> yeah, again, special thank you to all we of you. We appreciate right. donations donation. large and small, even for Mike Osterhage. <laughs> yes. Yes. Where do you go now? Okay, you're fast right this morning. <laughs> Very quick. But thank you. Uh, if you go <laughs> yes. to my page, uh, Mark Austin KSAT on No Shave, mm -hmm. I list the donors several times a week. I list everybody that has donated. That's so awesome. a little uh, wink, a little, little, little wink, wink. A little wink, wink there. Yep. Yes. As we Jockey for a position. Yes. Mike's Six, forming a plan over there. Yes, yes. <laughs> 6 11, 74 degrees. And still to come, San Antonio FC is one win away from their first championship. What they need to do to take the final step. And the moon is about to pull off its final disappearing act for the next few years. We could expect to see the eclipse after the break. And a quick look out there with live pan. Be careful on those roadways. Some of those streets are slick right now. 74 degrees and humid. We'll be right back.